Okay. Okay, so this is Tari, not Tani, Tari. Okay, now let's see if Karen's on the ball. Because we've talked about this before. Are you in Tari? What country is he from? Iran. Mm -mm -mm. Um, what, what does he play for? He, he's probably, he might have been born in Iran. Maybe. Uh, I doubt it. But you know, he's Iranian descent. But what, he's played for the same country forever. Mm. We've talked about him a lot. Not for his chest. He plays for the same country. Yeah, he's, he's always played for the same country. Yeah, Norway. Uh, okay. And why have we talked about him in the past? You'll remember if I tell you. I mean, you guys all think he's good looking, but I don't. So she, she remembers that. Right. That's what we talked about. Yes, his yeah. nose is too feminine. Right. Man, she remembered that. Doesn't know what country he plays for, <laughs> but knows about other people saying he's attractive and her saying he's not. Knows about that. I just said he's just average. Okay. Anyway, Tari is always fighting to see um, who the second best player in Norway is. Now, for a trillion dollars, Karen, after Magnus, okay, Magnus is one, Tari and who and or whom are fighting for second in Norway? Who's the other guy in Norway? And you've heard of him. Um, oh, God, I'm not going to go hammering. That's right. Yeah. Yoon Ludwig Hammer. Yoon. I, um. I know some stuff. Okay. <laughs> now, the reason I'm showing you this is it was brutal. Where's now, money? what? Right. Now, remember, when somebody's name is Daniel Barish, they're not going to win a chess tournament. That's Chess isn't their game. <laughs> Maybe they want to have a spelling contest, but not chess. Okay. Nobody named Daniel Barris has ever won a chess tournament, ever, and they never will. Let me give you an example of what I mean, just so I can get the point across to you people who are lingering. If Magnus Carlsen changed his name to Daniel Barris, he would never win a chess tournament again. And that's, that's why he doesn't do that. Right, sweetie? Yeah, I'm planning my, oh. my uh, investigation with my friend. What, on how good Tari looks? What? <laughs> we might do a drive-by. Yeah, don't do that. No. You're, you're, you're in your 50s. You're not 17. <laughs> don't do that. I'm not saying I don't want to do it, but don't do it. Okay. Now... Tari is really good at chess, somewhat overshadowed by Magnus in his own country. Another problem Tari has, which I never understand, is he's not getting better. Tari's been the same strength for five years. Tari's like 26-20, 26-30 permanently. It's just, that's his rating. I don't know. Truth hurts. Okay, now here he's playing Daniel Barish. So... If you're playing, if, if if you're a grandmaster and you're playing Daniel Barish, you know what you should be? This is one of my 10 greatest jokes ever, just so you know. If you're playing Daniel Barish, what should you be? You should be bullish. Um. Um. And bearish, that's pretty good. Daniel's from South Africa. Yeah. I don't get it as correct. All right. Now stay tuned for a tactical melee, the likes of which you've never seen. In this position, Bearish plays the engine move. Okay. White might want to play knight f6 check, so he sacrifices the exchange. Always sack the exchange. The engine agrees. Rook takes e5. And then king e6. Now, not only would nobody watching play the move Tari played, none of you would consider it. And it's the best move. If my opponent played this move, I'd be like, all right, I, I don't want to play you anymore. 
Yeah, bearish was really bearish after this move. <clears throat> That's right. You only live once. Right. F4. Bam. If my opponent plays F4, I, I give up. I'm like, all right, I can't beat you. Always sack a piece. But it's not really sacking a piece. F4 is the best move. That's unbelievable because um, this is move 31, so you can't have a lot of time on his clock. All right, so you guys are like, why can't you take the knight? You can. Now, you could play rook d4, but that's not as good as what he did. And I'm going to tell you why. He played rook d6 and then rook d4. And the reason that's better is because with the king on e6, thanks, Warallium, with the king on e6, black can play bishop d5 and then g5. And maybe white's winning, maybe, but maybe he's not because I'm going to win this pawn and I got three to one over here and my bishop's good, my king's good. The engine says white should win, but I don't know. I mean, takes or f5, king takes and... And we got a lot of pawns here. Okay, so, so Tari correctly checks first. And now you can't play bishop d5 and g5 because I play f5. I mean, your king's done on e6. So it resigns. Okay, so he played bishop f3. <clears throat> and now, this is why, when I say this is why, this is one of a hundred reasons why I'm not better than I am. When I have these technical winning positions, I win them technically unless I don't. You know, I try to win them technically, but trying is the first step to failure. So I, I like these moves. This is what I would do with white. And it would be difficult for me to play the next move with white. And again, it's the most accurate, the most brutal, the most etc. I would just be like, I'm up the exchange for a pawn. I have a passed e pawn. My king is good. Eventually, I'll win. And the engine agrees. If I just play normal, boring moves, eventually I'll win. And when you're a strong GM, you put your foot on their throat. And you don't go to jail because you're probably the second best player in Norway. Norway's not going to put Tari in jail. What if Magnus retires? If they put Tari in jail and Magnus retires, so Tari can put foot on anybody's throat he wants. And he did it again. All right. Um, yeah, he played F5. God damn. F4 was shocking. F5 is shocking. And the point of F5 is obvious. If you take it, which you have to, then Rook H4. God damn. Now, if I was white and I saw F5, Rook H4, which is unlikely... After like bishop g8, I would just be like, nah, I, I don't, you know, what am I doing? And he didn't play bishop g8, which is the best move. Um, but after rook h6, black can't do anything. The king can't move up. The bishop can't, you know, uh, uh, plus, plus five. So he took on a2, and this is, this is hopeless. Yeah. And then he resigned. So, I mean, white white was better, and it was just brutal the way he played. Like, super aggressive and good and so forth. And this is a very common thing. When, when it's not a round robin where everybody's the same strength, and you have a dis, you know, you have people who are 2, 3, 400, 500 points separated in rating, sometimes you see the smackdown of all time. Like, if, if the higher-rated player is playing his best and the lower-rated player is, like, a little off, they just, they just get blown away. Now, you guys don't like me, but you like Eric Ro You like... Actually, you don't know Eugene Perlstein. If you did know Eugene Perlstein, you'd like him. If you knew him. But you don't know him. But if you knew him, you'd put him in the category with um, Bartholomew and Rosen. He's better than Bartholomew and Rosen, but he's a really nice guy, unlike me. And he posted on Twitter today or yesterday, this is a great learning experience for students of the game to see how a 2600 FIDE player makes a 2300 look like a beginner. 
And I'm like, yeah, sometimes. Not not every time, but sometimes. Sometimes the games are close. You don't know what's going to happen. And sometimes you're like, how's that guy 2,300? He lost worse than I ever lose. And that's because his opponent is just much better. And we're going to see an example of that later in the, you know, in, in here. Yeah, no, Eugene Perlstein's like the nicest guy ever. Yeah. 